Welcome. You are now beginning a tour of McCall Glacier and the research that goes on here. My name is Matt Nolan. I'm currently the lead scientist on the project, and for the next 20 minutes, I'll be your guide. I hope to give you a good idea about what's going on here and how to learn more on your own. Located in the pristine Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, McCall Glacier has been studied since the International Geophysical Year in 1957-58, when it was selected for long-term research. At the start of the International Polar Year in 2007, it will be 50 years since research began in McCall Glacier. This is the longest and most complete record of scientific research of any glacier in the U.S. Arctic. Let's begin the tour by taking a look at changes in the glacier over the past 50 years. Nearly 50 years ago, glaciologist Austin Post took this picture during IGY in 1958. In 2003, at the start of my project, I took the second picture shown here. As you can see, the glacier has lost a lot of ice and the terminus has retreated substantially, over 800 meters, or about half a mile. Such retreats occur when the rate of ice melt exceeds the rate of ice accumulation over extended periods and really can only be explained by a change in climate. The major emphasis of our research is explaining exactly how the climate caused the retreat seen in these pictures. We need to understand climate and climate change in the Arctic because even very small changes can trigger major feedbacks to the global climate system, such as through increasing sea level by glacier melt, increasing greenhouse gases by permafrost melt, and decreasing sea ice extent through warmer air and ocean temperatures. As you will see later in this presentation, McCall Glacier is one of our few hopes for understanding climate and climate change in this region of the Arctic. To answer these questions, we need to understand several things. The mass balance of the glacier, that is how much snow falls, melts, and turns into ice. The velocity field of the glacier, that is how ice from the upper regions of the glacier flows into the lower regions. The surface elevation of the glacier, the local climate, and perhaps most importantly, the long-term trends in these measurements. Let's explore each of these measurements, beginning with the mass balance. The mass balance of a glacier is just that, a balance of the mass. Mass in this case is the amount of snow and ice that makes up the glacier, and the balance records how much snow falls minus how much snow and ice melts. When this balance is positive, more snow fell in winter than melted in summer, and this excess eventually turns into ice and helps the glacier get thicker and longer. When this balance is negative, as it has been for the past 50 years at McCall Glacier, the glacier gets thinner and retreats. Snow melts last at highest elevation because it's colder there. The long-term zero balance point between the zones of ice accumulation and ice wastage is called the equilibrium line. The further down glacier the equilibrium line, the healthier the glacier is. We measure this balance by drilling stakes into the ice surface and then measuring how much they get buried or exposed over time. The labels you see here on the surface represent the stake network we currently use. In the interactive version of this tour, you can place the cursor over any of the labels and you will see how much of the stake was exposed above the surface at the time it was installed and how it changed a year later. In this case, the black labels are stakes from May 2003 and the red labels are from the same stakes in May 2004. If you were to click on any of the stakes, a spreadsheet that contains all of our measurements will appear in the tab labeled Message in the 3D container window. Here the area colored blue represents the region which historically has been gaining mass and the area colored red has been losing mass based on our mass balance measurements. From our long term records we have learned that the most positive year on record was 2002-2003 at just about zero balance, that is the blue area was roughly the same size as the red. The most negative year on record was in 2003-2004, the next year, with roughly negative one meters of ice loss averaged over the entire surface, that is the entire glacier was in the red zone. This huge short-term variability underscores the need for long-term measurements. The long-term trend we have thus far indicates the red zone is growing and doing so at the expense of the blue zone. It's quite possible that if trends continue that all of the glacier will remain in the red zone and begin rapidly melting away. 